per i cittadini e Marco Veronese Passarella, Research Fellow at uh, um, Leeds Business School. So, um, modern, modern Morning Theory. Uh, Marco, in your opinion, which are the strengths and the weaknesses of this new approach to economics? Hello to everybody. Um, firstly, let me say that even though I'm not uh, a practitioner of the MMT, uh, let alone an expert of the uh, so-called neo-chartalist approach. I'm very interested in it and the main reason is that uh, the uh, modern money theory shares a number of features with the uh, so-called Italian monetary circuit theory uh, which is part of my theoretical background. Um, in my opinion there are two main merits, two main strengths of the uh, MMT approach. The first is political, where the second is theoretical. Uh, let's start with the political strength. Uh, I think that the MMT shows that uh, in spite of the well-known uh, claim of Margaret Thatcher, there is an alternative. There is an alternative to um, austerity policy measures and uh, more precisely the MMT shows that the austerity measures are neither necessary uh, nor beneficial for capitalist economies. Of course other heterodox authors have pointed out this but I think that the MMT practitioners have managed to gain prominence in the public debate and they have attracted a number of uh, the attention of a number of non-economists and also forcing some uh, uh, Nobel Prize winners to engage in a debate with the heterodox economics and I think that this is an amazing result, I think this is awesome um, in addition the MMT clarifies a number of theoretical points. Uh, for instance, it clarifies that the main flow of the euro area uh, is that the European Central Bank was preventing from purchasing and selling uh, treasury bonds uh, 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 from government uh, until the crisis at least, but we know that it did that during the crisis, but it did that by asking a number of, uh, of reforms to, to governments. So it was conditioned to a number of, of so-called reforms, structural reforms. And the other problem of the euro area is that the uh, national countries have been transformed into local governments which need to borrow from uh, um, financial market in order to finance their, their expenditure. Uh, uh, and in a sense they are at the mercy of, of financial markets. I think that the second merit of the uh, MMT is theoretical. The MMT along with other horizontalist approaches uh, to uh, money creations stresses that money create, uh, money is endogenous, that loans create deposits, that deposits make reserves and not vice versa, that the operating target for the central bank is the overnight interest rate on the unsecured uh, uh, money market and not some monetary aggregates and above all I think that uh, one of the main strength, strengths of, of the uh, MMT is that it stresses that government are not households uh, and therefore uh, that constraints to government spending and hence to the achievement of full employment are mainly political uh, constraints. They are somewhat artificial uh, constraints. Uh, this said, I have just a minor theoretical criticism to the MMT or to the neo chartalist approach. Uh, more precisely, as stressed by Marc Lavoie, uh, the consolidation of the central bank and the treasury into one unique entity is potentially misleading. 
Uh, notice that it's such consolidation which uh, allows MMT authors to conclude that government has no limits in its expenditure, that government spending logically precedes um, taxes and the issue of securities, and that uh, uh, government doesn't need to issue securities, that government doesn't need to uh, uh, levy taxes in order to finance its, its activity. And obviously there's a corollary, and that corollary is that uh, default is virtually impossible in the economy, and so on. Uh, now, the problem is that this is correct, in principle. Uh, I mean, if we assume that the central bank and the treasury are a unique consolidated sector, this is true, this is correct. Uh, however, in practice, uh, this is not the case of the euro area countries. And to the best of my knowledge, this is not the case of the United States as well. As, for instance, we know that the Federal Reserve uh, can purchase government securities just on the secondary market and not on the primary market uh, beyond a given threshold at least. And we know also that there is a political limit set by the US Congress to uh, the total amount, on the total amount of government debt. Obviously, I know that the most part of uh, of the founding fathers of the MMT are aware of this point. So I'm not saying that they don't know this, they know this very well. But sometimes it seems to me that some of their non-economists uh, followers uh, don't manage to, to, to grasp this point. And I think that this point is extremely important. In a sense, my criticism is, is a criticism to uh, uh, some misleading uh, and simplistic interpretations of the MMT. It's not a critic. Uh, it's not a criticism to the MMT per se. Summing up, I, I see many lights and just a few shades in the MMT. On the whole, the analysis of the MMT authors is correct, is essentially correct. However, I think that some revisions are necessary in order to apply the MMT to the uh, case of the European area. Furthermore, I, I think that it should be crossbred with a number of inputs from the Marxian analysis. For instance, I, I think that it should be crossbred with the Marxian analysis of the uh, uh, struggle between social classes, but this, of course, could be a task of the future generations of heterodox economists. Thank you.